Hola mi gente, ¿cómo están? Mi nombre es Alba Mar, me pueden decir Alba, el canal se llama Seriela, estamos aquí para hablar de libros, algunos de ellos en español desde Puerto Rico. Hello, my name is Alba Mar, you may call me Alba. Channel name is Seriela, we're here to talk about books and some of them in Spanish from Puerto Rico. This is part two of The Impossible Dream, my humongous nonfiction, scoden, Puerto Rican His Heritage Month. TBR. And I know it's unrealistic, but it's my wish list. So there. 15 minutes putting on my timer. See how far we get. I added a book. Can you believe it? Yeah. I got, uh, I received a comment uh, on the first video since I've been back from uh, Arian of Book Sellets. And I, uh, I was motivated by her comment to pick up Che Guevara, A Revolutionary Life by John Lee Anderson. Yes, that's a commitment. It has the little tape that I put on uh, from when Alan Morton, remember Alan? Uh, had uh, a book chunkster challenge. It's 754 pages. I'm going for it. Let's see how far I get. I know a lot of these are going to uh, go into, roll over into 2023, uh, but this video will, these two videos will serve as uh, a commitment uh, to finish the, these TBRs. Another commitment in Spanish is the lifelong endeavor of, um, Historian Félix Ojeda Reyes, Félix Ojeda Reyes, who has studied practically his whole life uh, about Ramón Emeterio Betances, who I have there on the, on the, on the door, uh, who is considered one of our uh, founding fathers in Puerto Rico. Uh, he was one of the participants uh, the organizers of our first uh, independence movement, uh, El Grito de Lares, in 1868. And he was a tremendous figure. Uh, so here uh, we have this, uh, another chunkster about uh, Ramon Emeterio Betances' life. El Desterrado del pa de París, Biografía del Dr. Ramón Emeterio Betances from 1827 to 1898. Yes, he passed away the same year of, of the invasion. El Desterrado de, pa de París means um, the exiled of Paris because after the insurrection, he was exiled in Paris. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this very much so. Okay, another one of my interests ever since I read James Michener's uh, Caribbean and I wanted to learn more about my neighbors. Uh, shameful that uh, I didn't know more about the, the, my neighbors, the people in the Caribbean. One of them being uh, one of the one of the players, economic, political players in Central America, which is on the other end of the Caribbean Sea, is uh, the United Fruit Company, and here we have West Indian workers and the United Fruit Company in Costa Rica from 1870 to 1940, yeah, and after that Michener book, I picked up Dying to Better Themselves by Olive, S Olive Stone, I think it is. I'll correct it down at the in the description box. From the worker side of the construction of the Panama Canal. Uh, a story I never knew. Wonderful, wonderful book. Recommended highly. 
And then current events, uh, I have two, two possibilities. Uh, but I decided to opt for this one, another chunkster. Impossible dream, but what can I do? That's what I want to do. Uh, cheer me on. That's what. Cheer me on. Uh, by Apple and Applebaum, Red Famine, Stalin's War on Ukraine. Uh, a lot of maps. Lots of maps. When I saw those maps, I said, hey, yes, that's going to help me out a lot. Um, yeah, more maps. Ukraine in 1922. Uh, yeah. I have uh, another book. I think it's The Gates of Europe. Uh, yeah. But we'll, we'll do that later because that's a lot more complex and a lot more history. Then I have here, what do I have here? Ah, by Richard Drinnen. Keeper of Concentration Camps uh, by Dylan S. Meyer. No, not by Dylan S. Meyer. The author is Richard Drinnen. And the book is about Dylan S. Meyer and American racism. Uh, he's writing, this is from the University of California Press, he's writing about uh, one of the figures behind the internment camps uh, during World War II, yeah, and later. I want to know more about that. This, this, you know, I need to read this. This has been on uh, my bookshelves uh, for a long time, and uh, I read The Shock Doctrine, and it was shocking. Yes, it was absolutely shocking. And uh, the similarities to what's happening here in the colony, uh, absolutely eye-opening. Uh, before that, before reading The Shock Doctrine, I had watched uh, Naomi Klein and her husband, uh, I'll get the name down, the, the documentary called The Take. And if you ever got a chance to see it, it's available on YouTube. The Take, which was about the financial upheaval in Argentina in uh, 2000, 2001, and how the workers, uh, the owners were shutting down factories and plants. And the workers were taking over and wanted to make co-ops out of them, right? Uh, Worker-owned co-ops. Uh, the Take is a fascinating documentary, and I, you know, I love it. I've rewatched it a, a few times already. So I already knew about Naomi Klein. She came after Hurricane Maria and wrote a little, you know, pamphlety type thing about what was happening, the disaster capitalism that was occurring in Puerto Rico after uh, Hurricane Maria. And, you know, that was another eye-opening, you know, little gem of a book, if you can pick it up. Uh, so This Changes Everything is the book that comes after The Shock Doctrine. And yeah, it's been on my list for a while, and I know I'm going to learn a lot from this. It's about uh, climate change, if I'm not... Yeah, capitalism versus the climate. Oh, if I can get to this memoir, I've wanted to. It's a graphic, a graphic book, The Arab of the Future, A Childhood in the Middle East, 1978 to 1984, by Riyad Satouf. Another one I've been wanting to get to, oh, Angela Davis, The Autobiography. There it is. I started, I started, but I'm going to continue. Another one that's been on, I know Heidi from My Reading Life has read it. Uh, and when I first saw it on uh, TV, uh, he did an interview about this book. I wanted it. How to Hide an Empire, History of the Greater United States by Daniel... Immerwar. Yeah. I'm not going to get to that one yet. Uh, oh, 
this was recommended. <laughs> you're never gonna, you're never gonna believe this. Uh, by Steve Donahue, not our president. <laughs> well, <laughs> Steve Donahue says it's good. <laughs> From all of the, you know, related books uh, and salacious books <laughs> about 45. Uh, let's see what it's like. Yeah. I hope to get to it. Another chunkster. Yeah, I love chunksters. What can I say? Oh, this was the other book. Um, that's, that concerns Ukraine. Uh, I think this is the this is the predecessor, one of the first ones. And this this I looked at the maps here. <laughs> this goes way back, way back. This is like. A real true history and from what I could see from the maps it's complicated people very very complicated as is the history of, of most countries and most conflicts in the world so yeah if I can get to it I will and then Puerto Rico in Spanish I might cry here not on the video, but while reading the book. This is the biography of Ricardo Alegría. Ricardo Alegría, Una Vida. Ricardo Alegría, A Life. Written by Carmen Dolores Hernandez, another chunkster. Don Ricardo, uh, Don is a term of respect. Don Ricardo, I, I met him. He was one of my professors when I, <laughs> I started a master's. I started a master's after uh, graduating from the University of Puerto Rico, getting my BA. I started a master's in Puerto Rican studies, which he uh, he made the proposal and and you know started it off in collaboration with uh, SUNY, the State University of New York, uh, and it was here in El Viejo San Juan, in the Dominican convent. And I used to get to go to the Viejo San Juan all the time, and I loved it. And uh, studying with Don Ricardo and Luis Nieves Falcón and all the other ones, and, and that's where I learned that Norma Valle was so interested in Luisa Capetillo, which was the first time I had heard about Luisa Capetillo. And just, you know, everything that Don, Don Ricardo did to uplift the Puerto Rican culture history, artifacts, yeah, we owe him a lot. And it's a travesty, travesty, what has happened to his work since he's been gone. So yeah, I hope to get to this one too. Uh, that's going to be like a priority. For Skoden, another one. This is literally my third one for Skoden. I, uh, Rigoberta Menchu, an Indian woman in Guatemala. I think she won the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, Rigoberta Menchu. And then, uh, this is another one I've been wanting to read since one of my very dear friends here in Puerto Rico read it. <laughs> she cried all the way through it by Svetlana Alexievich, The Unwomanly, Unwomanly Face of War, An Oral History of Women in World War II. And I, I thought I would never get through Voices of Chernobyl by the same author, but I did. And I admire her work tremendously. Yeah, I like oral histories. I love stuff to turkle. Yeah, so. And the last one, this should, this should be no problem, right? Small one by Toni Morrison, playing in the dark. Playing in the dark, whiteness and the literary imagination. Uh, yeah, I'm dying to hear what she has to say. This is literary criticism. So yeah, I have one minute left I'm gonna leave you now. Uh, so wish me luck. Yeah, cheer me on. Uh, there's so many 
great, great nonfiction books uh, out there. And I hope you find yours, yeah, uh, and your niche in the nonfiction world. Uh, as you may have noticed, I'm not doing the prompts, but that, you know, that's just, I, you know, if you can find uh, where my books fit in with the prompts, let me know. Uh, yeah, I'd appreciate it because the, my brain is just like focused on, ooh, these are the nonfiction books that I want to read, okay? So, cuídense mucho mi gente. Los quiero mucho. Take care, everybody. Adiós.